Understanding geography of Ladakh. Now, as you can see here, Ladakh is composed of two districts. So you have the Kargil district, and the next is the Leh district. Now, if I click on to the boundaries of Leh district, uh, as you can see here, you would have a boundary that does not include a boundary that does not include the regions of uh, the disputed territory. Now, understanding. The two major districts of Ladakh, that is the Kargil and Leh. Now, each of these districts have further subdivisions. So, we'll first begin with the Kargil district and then we'll move on to the Leh district. So, talking about the Kargil district, as you can see, you have uh, four important subdivisions that are there. The first is Kargil itself, then you have Dras, uh, Zanskar, Sanku, and you have the Sankar. Chiktan. Now, these four areas, as you can see, you have, I'll just mark it here, you have the Shanku, you have the Dras, then you have Kargil, uh, which is the city of Kargil, uh, in the Kargil district, then you have Chiktan and Zanskar. So, those are the four major subdivisions. Now, if you look on to the boundary, here you have the boundary that coincides with Jammu Kashmir. So, you have Sonmar, Gulmar, Waltal, which are part of it. Uh, closer to the region where you have the Kishtavar mountain ranges and the Kishtavar region, the Kishtavar district adjoins to the part of Zanskar. And finally, a main part of Zanskar connects to the region of Himachal Pradesh. So, you have Himachal Pradesh that borders here. Now, if we look on to uh, the valleys, we would have the Dras Valley in the region of Dras, which is very, very important. East of Dras, you have the Suru Valley and then you have the Vaka Valley. So, three important valleys in the region of Kargil. I repeat again, the Dras Valley, the Suru Valley, where you have the Suru River that flows and then finally, the Vaka Valley. So, you have Dras, Suru and Vaka. So let's understand these in detail one by one. So moving back to the next slide here, we have understanding of each of the region. So within the Kargil, as we said, the main town is the Kargil here, as you can see here. Now, this is one of the major centers and it's considered as the joint capital of Ladakh region. Now, this Kargil, the whole of the Kargil district has predominantly Muslim population of which predominantly Shia Muslim are part of it. If you look on to the overall composition, the ethnic composition that could be seen in the regions of Leh Ladakh area, uh, the Ladakh region, we would have Aryans, we would have the Argun Kashmiris, now these are the people who moved from the region of Kashmir and then you have the Mongoloids. Now the major proportion is seen by the Aryans and the Mongolites. Argun Kashmiris are relatively small in number and those are the people who moved from the region of Kashmir. Those from the Mongoloid are either the Bhuts, they are Balti Shias or they are Champa Buddhists. However, those from the Aryans can be further subdivided into two. Either they could be the Mons or the Dards. Now, Dards could be further subdivided into two. They could be Buddhist or they could be following Islam or they are uh, Muslims. And they are also known as, the, uh, the Buddhists are also known as Borkpas. Now, basically, as we saw in the region of Kargil, you have a predominant Muslim population. So, you would have the Dards who follow uh, Muslim sect are the main population that are seen in the regions of Kargil. So that is one of the major ethnic uh, composition if we look on to that is present. Now as we focused on to the four subdivisions, so let's move on to the first subdivision. The first subdivision here is the region of Dras. Now Dras is a very important location. It is the coldest place in Asia and the second coldest place in the world. It is known for uh, 
active snowfall in this region a major tourist site uh, you have a lot of uh, activities that are there now as per the present naming structure it is national highway 1 nh1 and the old ones that pass the highways that pass through here according to the old classification of the highways was the national highway 1a and 1d that pass through this region now this dras region lies between the region of zozila and kargil now if i zoom out a little you would have the region of kargil that we had seen now this region of kargil along with uh, as we said Dras, so Dras lies between the region of Kargil and Zozila. So this is where you have the Dras region that is seen. The next important subdivision that we understand today is the Zanskar subdivision. Now Zanskar as we said has an active region which adjoins the region of Himachal Pradesh. Zanskar separates uh, Ladakh and the Zanskar range. So that is where you have the Zanskar region. If we uh, talk about understanding the major uh, hill station, uh, the mountain ranges, you have KLZS that is the Karakoram, Ladakh, Zanskar and Shivaliks. So in the north of the Zanskar town, you would have the Ladakh range that would be there and in the south, you would have the Zanskar range and closer to the Zanskar, you have the Zanskar river that flows. So Zanskar, a very, very important subdivision of the Kargil region and as we said, it is located between Ladakh and Zanskar mountain ranges. So again, important. Uh, also, you have uh, since the Bronze Age, you have lot of developments that are seen and archaeological evidences that are seen from Zanskar as well. And also, Buddhism is a predominant section within the region of Kargil. As we said, it's predominantly a Muslim population. But here in Zanskar, you have Buddhism that is seen. Yak is a common animal that is seen here. So those are some of the common highlights of Zanskar. Moving on to the next subdivision of Kargil. So the next subdivision of Kargil that is present here is the Shanku area. Now the Shanku area is in the south of the Kargil area. It is one of the bowl shaped valleys as you could see with lot of uh, greenery and a major tourist center closer to the Kargil town, south of Kargil town. You have Suru river that flows through it. So as you can see in the map you have the Suru river that flows here and also you have uh, this this region is known as Ladakh's own gateway so again a very very uh, uh, very very lively place a very very uh, important place from the viewpoint of tourism that we could say the next important subdivision of the Kargil area is the Chiktan now Chiktan is located towards the northeast of the Kargil region it is lying in the valley now as you can see all the major towns that we have studied under Kargil so far are all lying in the valley areas they are not in the hilly area so that's very very important all major settlements lying in the valley area so Chiktan uh, is another important district that you could see so if I zoom back you could understand that these are the major subdivisions the four major subdivisions of the Kargil region now from the Kargil region let's move on to the next region which is the Leh region so if I focus on to the Leh region you have this red boundary as you could see is the markings for the Leha region but it does not include the disputed territory this boundary does not include the disputed territory so be very very clear that this boundary that is drawn in red here as you can see with the cursor moving here this boundary is the boundary of Leh without the disputed region so the boundary of the Leha actual boundary if I want to draw would be this boundary okay so this is the actual territory of the Indian region that we are trying to explain okay now this is the Galwan Valley region which was recently in news disputed and we'll understand more about it in a while but before we move there let's understand about the six subdivisions of Leha so the first subdivision that we would understand today is the Khalsi subdivision now Khalsi is a very important headquarter uh, in the Leha district now this is a place where you have have two crops a year now these two crops are important one is the barley and the other is buckwheat now chunk is one of the local uh, teas that is 
consumed in the region of leh and you have huge production uh, in the regions of khalsi which is seen here also you have from the barle you have the sangpa that is created and this sangpa uh, is uh, consumed a lot in the regions of ladakh even the kargil and the leh area so this khasi is predominantly an agricultural area within the area of leh i repeat again with two crops a year one is barley and other is either buckwheat or turnip so those are the staple food crops that are seen in this region the next important region that we would understand is the nubra valley now nubra valley is one of the major valley areas uh, along the nubra river and this is also known as the valley of flowers you have uh, as you move from the khardungla pass you have the nubra valley and as you can see here you have the nubra river that flows here so this is the nubra valley and the nubra river that could be seen here now the next important thing that we need to understand about uh, nubra it is a cold desert so it has a cold desert in the north so if i move out you could see the region of siachen here and this region of siachen would be the region where you have one of the major cold deserts in the regions of leh ladakh that is located nubra valley a very very important area you require inner flying permit to go into nubra region if you are an indian citizen if you are a foreign national you need to have a protected area permit to visit the nubra valley very very important subdivision the next important region the next important subdivision of leh district is kharu so kharu is again a major town that is located close to the indus river and then you have another uh, major subdivision which is nayom now nayom is known for buddhist monasteries uh, the nayom village itself is known for a lot of yak population you have lot of subdivisions that are seen advanced landing grounds are present here so for defense and military purposes nayom is is a one of the major important centers that could be seen here the next subdivision or the next tehsil uh, which could be seen of in the leh district is the darbog now darbog is lying between the changsang and the yangsang now closer to this you have the pangong so now if you look on to the darbog you would have the two major uh, uh, regions that would be there but one is the changla and the other is the yangtze sea now changla and yangtze sea both on the way to pangong song are one of the major so here you have the pangong song and on the way to the pangong song you have the darbog which is one of the major centers and major subdivisions of leh the next major subdivision that we would understand today is lakhir now lakhir is another major town which is predominantly in the valley areas you have buddhist monasteries lakhir gompa as you could see here is one of the major locations that could be seen and uh, here one of the very interesting features is a 25 foot monument of buddha which is built up in gold so that is one of the major reasons you have lot of visitors that are seen in the regions of lakhi now this was the major six subdivisions the six subdivisions of leh i repeat again you have the khalsi nubra kharu you have lakhi durbok and nayom as the six major subdivisions now coming on to next are some of the major lakes that are seen so the three high altitude lakes that are very very important are the pangong so now pangong so half of this pangong so as you can see the border here i'll just mark the border here so this is the border area now beyond this the pangong so lake lies in china pangong so is a endorheic lake that means it does not have any source that is coming in the next important lake which is among the three high altitude lake is known as somorari south of pangong so you have the somorari lake and next important lake the somorari is also known as the mountain link and the next important lake is the sokar now sokar as you could see would be in a different color this these are dark blue and this is relatively light in color because of the fluctuating level of salt that is present and this is one of the major reasons 
in the aerial imageries you have a little different color for the sokar lake so this is the sokar lake again a very very important lake so if you uh, go into a greater picture you would have all the three lakes here we can simply mark those so this is the region of pengongso this is the region where you have the somrari and then this is the region where you have the sokar so these are the three major lakes the high altitude lakes that are seen now coming on to the mineral deposits in the regions of the nubra valley you have mainly copper mining that is seen uh, then you have a lot of copper deposits that are there in the regions of puga valley you have borax that is seen similarly you also have garnet as a semi precious stone as a precious stones that are seen also in the regions of changthang you have gold that is seen so changthang is again a important location where you have gold that is seen so those are some of the minerals that are seen if we talk about some of the vegetations apples apricots are commonly seen but one of the major uh, vegetation or major crops here would be the sea buckthorn small fruits that are present now sea buckthorn is uh, basically found only in this area very very important and uh, has a lot of properties you have uh, sea buckthorns being used uh, for nutritional purposes in beverages and so on the next important location that we'll move on to is the locations that have been in news recently so as we said the galwan valley on the galwan river is very very important now this is a part of the disputed territory of aksai chin with china so this is the region where you have the galwan valley the next important location where recently prime minister visited was nimu now nimu is the headquarter of the nimu block and here you have uh, the military that was addressed by the prime minister the next important location is the stakna now stakna is another important location and it's one of the major landing grounds closer to the indus valley uh, indus river so both the nimu and Skatna uh, lies on the banks of the Indus River. So here again you have the Indus River that flows, and here again you have the Indus River that flows. Now both of these towns have been important. Skatna is one of the places where recently the Defence Minister had visited. So those were some of the major highlights that we have covered for the region of Leh Ladakh in our second section. In the first edition we talked about the physiographic divisions, and in this section we have mainly focused on to the political divisions. I repeat again. Again, Ladakh being divided into two districts, the Kargil and the Leh. Kargil have four subdivisions as we discussed. Leh has six subdivisions as we discussed, and then we focused on to some of the major mining centers. the ethnicity and the major vegetation in these areas some of the major valley areas and the adjoining rivers that flow on, uh, on this now this is one of the very important topics from your gs perspective this year we would be covering many such interesting topics stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead